Hi, I'm Alan with Alan's Firearms and Guns Plus More, and this is one of the plus mores. Set up a studio in my home to do it. I tried a green screen for the first time. Didn't come out perfect, so I went and I got some more equipment, and this is a roller system for my backdrops, which attaches to the wall. Um, I ordered it online. They're anywhere from 75 to 100 bucks or more. Uh, I found this one, it was about 39 bucks. Uh, and the cheapest I've seen them was 59 So I figured, hey, what a bargain. I bought it. It came in. It's from um, a day early. And so I was quite pleased with that. And it's from Cowboy Studios. I already cut the tape on it. So let me show you what it is. And this is how it's packed. It has an instruction sheet, which is uh, vague, but it's okay because this is a pretty straightforward setup. It comes with... Three plastic chains color coded. So what this is for is you're going to have the backdrops that are on a rack and you can roll them up and roll them down. Here's one side of the rack. As you can see this goes on the wall like this and it holds the three different roller rods. It comes with three weights that the chain goes through to keep the loose ends down so they don't go flopping around. Here's the other side of the rack. And finally, we have three sets of these, which I will, I already opened one up. This is one side, which basically is for, um, this is the way it works. You take a tube like this, and this goes in here like that, and then you tighten this up like this, and basically what it does is it locks right onto this, like that. There you go. Now, this is short, and the reason is it's too big to go through the pocket of the backdrops I have. So, this is what I got for that. Now, of course, this is a shortened piece. This is an extra length that I cut off of the long part, which I have some step-down pieces that I'm going to glue in here. I'll show you how to do that. And then each side of it, each, each side, this one will have one of these, will have the rod in between it and will hang on the wall so I'll be able to easily control my backdrops. So basically, that's what's in the boxes. Like I said, there's three sets of these. Oh, you know what else is in here? This is really cool. They give you the hardware, the expansion bolts, which I'll give you a closer look at them when I'm putting it together. These expansion bolts go on the wall. The next step is the installation. See you in my studio. You're going to need your 2-inch PVC, which this is about uh, 8 inches long. You need two of them for one pole. You're going to need two step-down pieces. You're going to need two junction pieces, joiner pieces, and you're going to need two, one and whatever you're going to step it down to. I think mine is uh, one and uh, one and three quarters. Okay. So I'm going to build one right now. You're going to use this PVC paint. Now I didn't show you cutting it. The measurement I I winged it. I stuck the, two, the smaller tube that fit through the pocket in the green screen or one of my backdrops. I gave it an extra three inches on each side in case I ever want to use a, a little bigger, or wider screen. Then I cut these in order for it to fit this. So that's really all I did as far as the measurements go. I cut it on my saw, but you can use a hand saw or a, you know, a hack saw if you have one. And now I just open this up. Now this stuff sets pretty fast, so you have to work kind of quick with it. And in a well-ventilated room, the reason you glue this is because, well I'm doing it because these things don't have such a positive, you know, some, sometimes you can put PVC together and you slam it together and it stays, but this is holding up big pieces of cloth, so I'm just going to make sure they don't slip. If you can find pieces that are tight enough, you probably don't need to glue it. Now, I'm not going to glue this on the big piece. That way, I have um, an easy disconnect if I need to. 
swished a little bit of that around and I'm just going to put this in, give it a twist, push it in. Okay, so we have one made. I am not going to glue it onto here because here I can push this on tight enough and uh, it gives me a little bit of leeway in case I need to rebuild something later on. Goes on here like so. You don't need a lot of this stuff. What it does, it actually is like, it's not really a glue. It's more like uh, an acetone mixture that literally melts the PVC a little bit. And when it gets eaten into the material, what ends up happening is it dries up and they, they join. So I just push this into the, on the floor a little bit just to get a, a good seat on it. So now I got these two. I'm going to close up these. I have to, You have to make, if you're going to use all three stations, and I don't know why you wouldn't, I want to do two shots of everything, a green screen shot and a white or a black background shot. This way, if the green screen doesn't look good, I have a second take with another colored background. And it's easily done. These are about dry, so you got to make six of these. So you'll end up with six of these complete. Now, I'm not going to glue this like I said. If I have a slippage problem, I may end up, but I think I can bang this in here tight enough, but still be able to knock it off if I need to. Okay, so I'm going to give this another minute or two to uh, melt and dry, and then I'm going to come back and I will show you how to hang these racks. Woohoo! Okay, so I'm back. A couple of things I didn't realize. I realized it after I did said it. These are uh, expansion uh, screws, which is what I said they are. These are for going into cement walls or even cinder block walls if you if they're filled. They're not good for drywall. So if you have drywall, you're going to have to get either um, toggle bolts, um, star anchors, or these little guys. Let me show you what they are. These go into these go into uh, drywall. You just need a screwdriver to put them in. And then I have, and then you put the screw in, and I have these little washers that go on the screw because these holes are almost the same size as the screw head. So, I mean, the screw would probably not go through. Let's see. Okay, the hole is a, a little bigger than the screw head, so the screw wouldn't go through, won't go through, but. Just to be on the safe side, I have these washers that are pretty tight around the screw and gives me a real positive seat on here, okay? They're brass, so they won't rust. What I did was, I took one of the poles and I figured out where I want it on this wall. And what I came up with is from this side wall, which is... Uh, the freest wall, the two free walls are the back wall, which I'm using, and the side wall. It's eight inch, uh, nine inches from the wall. So this is going to go nine inches over, and I figured out the height by getting on the step stool and dropping my backdrop. So what I did was I figured the lowest point and the highest point. So the highest point is going to be my black, and that's never going to go past uh, full, you know, body length. So the black can be touching, just touching the floor. The green is going to be the longest because that sometimes I'll, I may want a little scoop on there in case I want to do a big green screen, and of course then the white. This I figure is going to be even with the top of my windowsill. This will be just above it. This will be just below it. So that's what I'm figuring. But really, it's just the installation. So after I get this up, and I'll zoom in up there and show you how I'm doing it, then I figure out the other side. Now, luckily, the other side has a lot of leeway here on this. They figured out, you know, it's really difficult to match this up perfect, so it, it has a, a lot of room to play with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the camera angle, and I'm going to measure out and show you how to use these little mollies and how to figure out how to do this. I'm going to come up here, and here's my windowsill. 
So I'm going to come out nine inches. And I have this even with the windowsill. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put one mark. In the, I'm going to put a dot in the center. I'm going to put a circle around the outside. There we go. And a little center lock. So I'm only going to do one. Because after I get it in, then I'm going to take my level <clears throat> and adjust to get this second bottom one. And I guess you can see that. I'm putting this right in the center of that hole, that mark I made. I'm pressing it in, and I just screw it in. And this cuts right into the wall all by itself. There it goes. You just do it until it snugs up to the wall. Just like that. Man, I don't like these things. Okay. So that's the first one. So I'm going to use that just to level these out. So I'm going to put the screw in part way, just a little bit. Because I don't want to it locking in yet. Okay, so there's my first one. And I'm going to take a level. Please don't fall. <clears throat> Just to make sure that this is level. And this is the point where I mark it with my pen. Now I'm unscrewing that first screw. Remember I only put it in a couple of turns. Just enough to hold it. Because I don't want to these things to expand. When the screw goes in far enough, it expands. So the first one, I only put the screw in a couple of turns just to hold it in place. I don't want to screw it any more than that because they expand. Once they expand, you're done. It's no good anymore. Okay, so now I'm going to put in this one. This one's going in better. I'm just going to make sure you do it straight. And this one. This is an odd angle because I'm up against this wall. And you just turn them until they're flush with the wall. Oh, that one in really nice. And then this last one. I just gave this one a couple of hits to get it going. Okay, so that's in, and now I can screw these in and down for, for real. So I take the first one, line it up, put it in. You could use those plastic pieces that the anchors I used. Do not use a, an electric screwdriver with them. Not a good idea because they will rip out the wall for, you know, if they go in, they will rip out your wall. You'll have a mess. Use a screwdriver. Put in the other screws. Using an electric screwdriver, I guess, would be okay with the screw part, to, with putting in the screws. As long as you have a torque engine on your screwdriver, where you can set the torque so it stops once it gets deep enough. So this is the, now that I didn't tighten them all the way, I'll do that after they're all down and in. Do each one a little tightening after I get these in. Okay, and this is the last one. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, now I'm going to tighten them up. Now these are rated for 75 pounds a piece, so there's no way these three curtains, these three backdrops and rod is that much, so that's pretty good. There we go. So that's the first one in. So that's how it's going to go, just like that. And these go in just like this. Now I just have to figure out where the other one goes on. The other side of the wall. Mark approximately where it's got to be and, and that the bar is level. So this is going to be... A this is going to be a bit of a challenge. So I'm going to put the other side in and then come back and get this side. Okay, that's good, except I left my step stool on that side. Okay, so this is on here on the first ring. I'm going to get this on the same thing on this side. Okay, there we go. So, I have this like this. I'm going to put this across here. Okay, so that seems to be about where it needs to be. So I'm just going to give this a little mark. not hard but it's kind of sweaty. I'm getting the other packages of these things. Now if I'm not looking very professional at this it's because I'm not a professional hanger guy. I'm more into the gun stuff but it's to show you that anyone with a screwdriver and a twisted brain can do this. So, that is one of these in there, and I'm going to take the screw and did what I, do what I did last time, is hang this on one screw and get it straight. One, two, three. So I did three turns. That's all I'm doing It's three turns. And I'm looking for my other washer. I got three out of four washers. And I want washers on every one. What happened to the washer? Here it is. Okay. Okay, so, so you got to use a level because if you don't, it's not going to be straight because especially when you're hanging stuff at weird angles, these are all in place right. So this is going pretty fast now, now that I got um, the hang of what I'm doing. Okay, it all, all looks good. So now all that's left is to take the screws, put the washers on them. By the way, this is not a good idea what I'm doing, but putting live screws your nails in your mouth, because if you fall down, you can get yourself in serious trouble. The only reason I'm doing it, I'm an asshole. It would help if I had this with me. You see, another thing is you can't really talk when you're out full. Very bad manners. 
talking with your mouth full. Okay. No, not really. You're right on. Yep. See, the longer the screwdriver is, the more torque you can deliver. And it gets the screw in better. Yeah, it's got to, the screw has got to go through the back of the plastic piece. Once it goes through there, it's a lot easier to screw it in. And last one. Okay, so let me zoom in on that up there. You can see I have that hung. The bar is going across. And that's hung up there. Two screws on the bottom, two screws on the top. That was pretty easy to put up. Just goes across. You put one side on, and then you walk across the room holding up the other side, and then you just drop it right on there. And then you can insert it into the slots that are up there. So there's a piece that goes right into that slot. You can see the little handrail there the little hand screw okay so now the thing is these tubes the thing is the pocket each backdrop has a sewn-in pocket that slides over that tube the problem is the tube isn't big enough where the and that fabric isn't stretched enough where it would get a good enough grip on it Use the chain, and I will show you on the next one I do how this chain works. If I do the chain, the tube is just going to spin inside the pocket. I had to come up with an idea. I bought this piece of wood. It's a piece of molding. I've got three pieces, and you can see it's very thin. One side is rounded. The other side is square. So the square side will go down. The rounded side will go up. This will go in the pocket. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I put the piece of wood down on here. Now I gave myself a two inch leeway on each side so it's easy to see. I mean, it's two, in it's two inches, it's this big. So what I'm gonna do, the first thing I'm gonna do is I gotta drill holes in here. Now these are self-tapping -tap -ta screws which I got so they go into here pretty easily, but I don't want to do, do it through the wood. So I'm going to get a drill bit that is big enough to make a hole in this. I can just slide the screw through without biting into the wood. See, the whole thing is you want the, the screw to be able to go through the wood, but then go into this. So this is the drill bit. Okay, so I'm going to put this right on here. Okay, so I'm going to put a hole right in the center of this. So I put my first hole in it. I'm going to check to make sure the screw goes in without any issues. I'm going to put one in on the other side. And then I will worry about getting dead center. I'll worry about all the other holes after this is on. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm going to see how this works out. So the first one I'm doing is the green screen.
That's pretty cool. So, first thing we're going to do, is I'm going to put this on here, get it measured about where I have it, and I'm going to put, I'm going to start this with the screwdriver, cleaning with the drill. And then I'm going to do the rest with the screw, because it's self-tapping. You're supposed to use a power drill with these things, because it's like the front is a drill bit. But I'm not going to do that. Okay, so this is getting in there. Now I'm not going to tighten the screw all the way down, because i got to do the other side. And I need a little give on this so I can make sure the cloth is straight. So I'm going to take the drill to the other side and let's take a look over there. Okay, come around the other side of this. And I'm going to start the hole. This stuff is slippery, so I'm going to start the hole with this so it, it's got something to grab onto. Okay, that's good. So, now I just pull the green screen out, make sure it's even, smooth, and flat. I'm going to tighten this down. We tighten both sides. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm going to put it up on the hangers. So, in order to put it on the hangers, what I'm going to do is I have to take this down again anyway because I have to get the other side. I'm just going to Rest it up there and rest it on the other side. So I have it just hanging. I just put it on there and just letting it hang. Now I can adjust this. There, it's in. Now on this side, I have to get up here because this has this little adjustment piece that moves in and out so you can get it right. So I slide it and it goes right in. Now I have it. Now, let's see how this goes up. I already put the chain on, and I'll show you how to do that. Oops, on the next one, because as you're ironing it, one area, another area is wrinkling. And once this is rolled up on here, I can easily take the whole thing down. When I put up the other other pieces. I'm just keeping this nice and smooth. And there we go. My green screen rolled up. And show you how to put the chain on one end. That way that'll complete the video. And then we'll move ahead to installing one. That way I can stick this in right. That's it. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to put in this side, and I'll show you how that goes. You put that in like that, I'm going to put the black right up to the edge of the white, and I'm going to turn this knob, see, just turn the knob, and it will start to expand, and just turn it until it's got a nice tight fit. You don't have to overturn it. It, once you get some resistance, just a little more than just the resistance, and you're fine. Because if you go more than that, this, is all, this stuff's Chinese stuff, and if you handle it okay and treat it gently, it'll do your job for you. But this is not meant for a professional studio. This is meant for a typical little guy like us, like me, who's doing some YouTube videos and... That kind of thing. Okay, so now we have this in here. 
we go. So now the screw is in the plexi. I'm going to leave some space and I'm going to do the other side. So I get that center. I'm going to start the hole a little bit. Okay, there it goes. Now the screw just drilled its hole and it's going in. So now before I tighten it up, I'm going to get this nice and pulled out on the wood so there's no wrinkles on it. Okay, there's more on this side, that side than this side. So I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. There we go. And now I'm going to tighten it down and that will hold the fabric in place so I can roll it up. Now I'm, gonna, I'm tightening this to the point where it's biting into the wood, but I'm not screwing it all the way down, otherwise you'll break the wood. Now, if it comes to a point where the wood starts to sag, I got these little washers and I will actually drill a hole in the center or on each side through the fabric and, and screw them in. But now, now, the other one, I had to remove some linkage. Now this is just a plastic chain, that's all it is. But if you don't unravel it in one direction, it falls on top of itself and it's a pain in the ass. So I'm unraveling it so it's all flat and there's no turns in it. Okay, you see that's what I mean by turns in it, but it's at the end so it's not so bad. If you just Dump it, if you just put, dump it out, it's a pain in the butt. So I'm going to measure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the same amount of blue chain. It's plastic, so I'm just going to leave a couple of extra, I think, because that way it will be, because it's up higher. You just twist it and it pops off. There, so that popped off. I'm going to take the weight. Okay, so this goes through here like this. So it rides right in there along the chain. See? Let me put it on a white wall. See? There's this wheel and this bar that's around this. Okay? So I'm going to put this on this wheel and I'm just going to move the bar around it this way and that way and then I can turn this whole thing okay so the whole thing's got to turn because the way this is designed that's the gear that holds it in place so now I have to pull this chain through my hand keeping it straight and this link just gets snapped right back into this link and it's a pain in the butt but it's not hard there it's done okay <clears throat> So here is the setup. Now you can see you have to stagger the chains. You got to put the chains, the, each chain through 10 bar that's in the one in front of it. So you can see this chain is going through this bar in the back. So there's one, two, three. That way they are not in, interfered with and it goes all the way down to the floor there's all three of my backdrops that are actually dropped I'm gonna move over here so that's what it looks like it came out really well uh, there's a lot more fabric up there if I needed to pull it down to the floor now you could see there was still some wrinkles but that's basically it and you could see how it came out I think it's um, it came out pretty good and this will allow me to do my videos a lot easier Thanks for watching. This is Alan from Alan's Firearms, Guns Plus More, and of course this was a plus more.